You're listening to After No War, broadcasting from the beautiful South Birmingham. Except no sandwich. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the world famous Achtung Millwall, big in Bermondsey, massive in Macedonia. Uh, we are the number one Millwall <laughs> podcast. Uh, my name is Aaron Paul. Delighted to be with you once again after after back to back wins in front of the uh, the gazing eyes of Mr. John Berylson, the chairman in town, and Gary Rout was just uh, just 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 wondering, just wondering what. The owner was doing in London, but yet yeah, back to back wins and uh, Millwall, yeah, six points off the playoffs. Let's uh, introduce the panel. Um, recovering from the Rona is Mr. Nick Hart. Hello, Nick. Good evening, listeners. Good evening, Aaron. Good evening, Brian. Um, How you feeling? I, Tell us. I, I've, got, I've got a cough. So every now and again, the reason Aaron's um, he's on my side of the bed tonight, listeners, but um, it's in case I start coughing and spluttering uncontrollably, it's ugly listening. And I'm going to hit the, the mute button every so often. So, um, but yeah, no, really good game last night. I enjoyed it. It was genuinely exciting and genuinely enjoyable. And it was everything that we want from Millwall. So um, great, great stuff last night. And as you say, back to back wins. What we can argue with that. With us as well, uh, Ryan Loftus. Ryan, I, I got to share your your company uh, last last night. It was it was lovely, you know. Yeah, yeah. I got the great view down the front. You know, got the uh, mucking in with the BBC pals. You know, I'm just waiting for my uh, to jump on that gravy train alongside you, Aaron. You know, <laughs> got got the tea and the biscuits. Now I just need the pay packet. <laughs> hey, the tea and the biscuits were good. The snacks were good, and you didn't have to you didn't have to mess around with all them, you know, donuts up there. Who's that fella that we were talking about yesterday? Mole oh, man. Mole man. We are looking for a journalist. Well, apparent journalist. I use the air quotes journalist. If you have seen him at the den, let us know who he is if you if you do know who he is. He wears a leather jacket. He looks like Hans Mole Man at the Simpsons. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh Millwall two, Queen's Park Rangers nil. Nick, QPR coming to the den off the back of a defeat at Barnsley, one where Mark Warburton talked about how his side needed to improve. And let's be fair, you know, if you get beat by Barnsley, you need to improve. Um, they were poor last night, Queen's Park Rangers. They were exceptionally poor. Uh, or were, or was it that Mill played them off the park, Aaron? Because that's the narrative that I like. A um, bit of both. I mean, they're clearly a decent side. They were placed fourth, I think, at the start of the game last night. I don't know if that's still so. I haven't looked at the table today but um no i thought they were they didn't get a sniff of anything till the late stages of the game and i think that's that's a defensive masterclass by Millwall because um you know they they may have had a, a bit of a mare last saturday but they're a decent side they've got players of talent uh, and i've got a lot of time for mark Warburton as well as a manager so you know that's a, that's a decent outfit and we really really did play them off the park it was wonderful to see there's been a lot of talk around the den lately of the need to entertain the crowd and and, and get some fire on the in the bellies of the, the, the comes from the players but also uh from the terraces and you know last night we saw it and i think you got you got to praise where it's due aaron and you know it's easy to you know gary rowett's been taking some criticism of late uh, for negative football and, and and all the rest of it and I think sometimes you've got to be prepared to praise where it's due because last night's performance was a proper mill performance and yeah. a genuinely exciting game. And that's what we want. And we got it. You know, fantastic stuff. More of the same, please. That's 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 what it's all about. Ryan, did we see that football yesterday? Because Gary Rout had to play Mason Bennett down the middle. He had to do certain things. He had to play Tyler Bury. Is that why we saw the game fall out how it was? Sort of, you know, falling in place how it was? Yeah, it's interesting because it was slightly different to normal. I asked him after the game because Scott Malone and Danny McNamara were very, very high up the pitch. We've seen mm. it a few times, but not all the time. But as soon as Mill had the ball at the back, they were on the halfway line and it was just five across the front. And Rowett did say, you know, that was something specifically done for this game to, to kind of <clears throat> use the wings a bit more, get further forward. Obviously, when is when you're playing a team that also playing free at the back, you can just have pretty much a one v one battle, and if you come out on top, you're going to get in more more often than not. So when Rowett's forced into making a change like that and can't play to a focal point who we're just knocking balls in behind for, you have to think a bit smarter and you know 
probably that is the reason we played a bit more attacking. Jed Wallace is also a reason we played a bit more attacking. But it was a much more impressive display, even from Saturday, where we still won, but the performance was nothing like it. Um, it was much more fluid, much quicker, and just consistently dangerous for 90 minutes, which this season we've probably only been getting 45 minutes at a time. Even, Absolutely. Even when Millwall defended Nick, you know, when they're 2 0 up and, and they're to defend, they look resolute, they look strong. And, you know, QPR have some decent fire power off the bench. Charlie Austin, someone who knows his way to the back of the uh, the onion bag. But, you know, he couldn't really do much. They 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 didn't really offer much. I mean, Bart had a pretty simple night, didn't he? Absolutely. I mean, they, 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 their best chance, I thought, was it a corner, like a mm. direct corner that curled back in? Yeah. I think Keith and Bell headed it off the line. Um, which I thought was in the net at the time. So, oh, you know, um, that was a, that was a great, great piece of work by Michael. Um, but that was their first and probably their standout chance. They had a couple of late moments where they got the ball flashing across our six-yard box, but with no real danger at the end of it. Um, and it's, you know, last night I thought, um, I saw Gary Rowett's interview on the uh, on the recast app and he was talking about the, uh, the pressing and all the rest of it. Um, I just think it was a defensively strong performance in the right way because you, we, we've had the worst of all worlds so far this season where the defence hasn't looked all that great and we haven't offered much going forward. So we've had like this kind of nothing-y kind of um, feeling through too many games. But last night, the defence was was um, was rugged and put them to the sword, really. And going forwards, well, you know, we'll come on to the goals later, chaps. But um, I thought that was... One of the best, and I think actually he said that Gary Rowett didn't he, in in his post match interview. Mm. It's one of his best performances, Mill manager, and I agree with him because it was genuinely uplifting to see it. It, it took me back to the pre COVID era when we had a bit of a touch of this at the time, you know. And then last night was back to those days. So late in the season, but long may that continue. Let's let's hope we can roll it on to Saturday. It was a proper performance, Brian. It was a proper night at the den. I know. You know, a lot of people decided not to turn up because of a variety of reasons. Look, it is a, a Tuesday night in school term. I know some schools are off, some schools are on, but, you know, kids, it's tough to bring the kids down and stuff like that. But, you know, there were gaps, especially in Cold Blow Lane. If you look at that, that was quite patchy. Um, the Docker stand quite patchy as well. But, but Millwall turned up yesterday for the supporters. Yeah, you, you can't blame people for keeping away. Like you say, it's a Tuesday night, so it's always a bit of a smaller crowd, especially of late with you know everyone's kind of finances being impacted. But even after Saturday, where you get the win, and it was still a pretty deflated feeling, I imagine for most people leaving the ground, you've got you know the optimists who you know a win's a win, you take it, and that makes your day. But there was, especially online, there seemed to be a lot of chat about you know how boring the football is and how stale it's been, and it has been like that for a little while, but. Uh, the the reason yesterday's performance I think was so good and why Rao would probably pick it out as one of his best as a Millwall manager or one of you know his favourite under as a Millwall manager is that it was complete it was ninety minutes mm. and we didn't concede a late goal and we didn't ever really look like conceding like I said their best two chances were that one Keith Bell heading off the line I think there was one in the first half that deflected off of someone and it looked for a second like it might have wrong footed Bart but he gathered it pretty easily in the end it was just comprehensive that when we will come out of a game saying we, we, we should have won it by more normally we've beat to one nil or we've drawn a game and you say we should have scored more but in this performance it's because we were being so dominant which isn't that often that doesn't happen that often for Millwall and I really liked the use of the wing backs I liked the positivity that we had I think the defense is a great point that Nick made and I think sometimes when you're playing a back five that regularly Sometimes you just need to trust the three central defenders that are going to do their job and give the permission for the wing backs to bomb forward and be your extra attackers, especially when we've got a pretty defensive midfield too, especially Keith and Bell, Billy Mitchell, probably more defensive minded than attacking minded, especially under Rowett. When you've got that sort of base, you know, where people moan about it all the time, where you see the lineup and goes, bloody hell, it's seven defensive players again. And so when you've got that, you know, Malone and Danny McNamara are two very forward-thinking players, Malone especially. Yeah. Get them further forward, get them bombing on. And, you know, I tweeted out the um, that clip from the Blackburn game early in the season where it's a carbon copy of the, the first goal 
where Malone is the furthest player forward, you know, and, and you can find him with the deep ball. I think first for instance, it was Daniel Ballard. Yesterday it was um, uh, Jed Wallace. But when he's forward, and I think Danny McNamara can do the exact same job on the same side, it's much more threatening. We don't need that recognised striker to be a focal point if we're getting it wide and pulling balls back in. If you've got players running on that Savile can do, that Wallace can do, that Bennett can obviously do, then that's how we can thre- threaten and create more. And you want that positivity probably more on a more regular basis is, is what the crowd want, and that should get the numbers up. That was the point of Scott Malone, though, to, to bring him in was, was to exploit his attacking instinct you know we saw it at Fulham obviously look his career has taken him in a whole bunch of other directions but especially at Fulham where he effectively used to sit on the halfway line when he's playing in Slavisio Kanovic's team and and yesterday he demonstrated it brilliantly you know by making that run Jed picks out the pass instead of that standard thing Ryan you know where Jed would have looked right Danny McNamara's there on the overlap play the ball in get to the byline try and stick a cross in and it's roulette isn't it because let's be Mm. fair you haven't got a target man in the box but with that vision of Jed you've got someone who can pick out a pass and he's picked out Scott Malone beautifully and the best thing about Malone he didn't stop the ball he didn't stop it and he didn't wait and think and go right who can I find here he's gone straight instinct instant instant and that was a really, really, really well-crafted goal, that first one. Yeah, I mean, I think Malone, in his first season back, you know, he was up for player of the season last year. I think he was our second top goal scorer, wasn't he? You know, how forward he was getting. I think, I think we've not seen him get as far forward. And he's one of those wing-backs, a bit like maybe Marcus Alonso for Chelsea, where, you know, he's in the team really more for his attacking than his defending. You know, if, if there's a game where Mill were really not, fancying their chances and really want to be cautious you would play Murray Wallace out on the wing back but Malone is in the side really for his creativity and for his attacking threat and like I say he takes that ball from Jed really well it's just a cushioned ball across it's very easy to mess that up anyone who's played football five a side 11 a side ever will know that a ball coming in from that far away nine times out of ten would just bounce off your foot and go wherever but the fact that he can cushion it and like I say yesterday it was Jed playing that pass previously it was Ballard we've got um, Jake Cooper's an excellent long passer, can do it on the other side of the pitch if he's looking to pick out McNamara. And I think it's just something we would like to see more from Mill. You know, it's still direct. It's still getting the ball forward quickly, which I think is what quite a lot of fans want, but not necessarily to a massive bloke in the box who is being wrestled to the ground by three others and not getting penalties all day long. It's a little bit of craft, a little bit of guile that we've seen can open teams up again and again. I'm just going to say Jed's diagonal ball for the first goal was... It's one of those moments where you know people often say, or they, I don't know if they still say it, that if that was a Brazilian, that we, we'd all be raving about it. I don't know if they still say things like that. They should do if they, if they don't. Um, but if that had been a Brazilian or a continental, then we'd be saying, oh, there's the innate difference in quality between our boys and, and what, what they produce abroad. But Jed Wallace's diagonal ball and then the cushion pass into the uh, cross pass, whatever you want to call it, by Scott Malone was a thing of beauty and, you know, very efficiently put away by Mason Bennett, who I was really impressed with last night. And yeah. I thought that was actually one of the, I'd forgotten that goal. You, you did well to dig that one out there, Ryan, that, uh, that Blackburn goal. I'd forgotten that completely. Uh, Cause it was very similar, wasn't it? It was yeah, the exact similar, same move. The exact move. same move. Um, and it's, it was just, you know, we, we've been crying out for, moments like that listeners where you 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 suddenly realize where you've gone to the football where you've gone to Millwall it's for moments where you feel that you've been lifted up and that's that's one of those moments you know it's a beautiful thing and and nicely put away by by Mason as we've said and I think that's what we've been missing with with uh, not having Jed I mean you can't lose quality players although we've got an injury list that um I was right, trying to write out the injury list before we came on the show and I was I'm forgetting people and I've got Benningophobia and Ollie Burke now written is that why we've got the delayed recording time, Nick, actually? Yeah. You, start, you started at 12 and realised how much work there was to do. I thought I'd do some prep two minutes before the start of the show, <laughs> listeners. I'd write out the injury list just in case I forget. Um, I mean, it's extensive. Let's just leave it there. Um, but you can't lose Jed, who's been injured, and there not be a, a, you know, a knock-on from that. And to see him back, whatever becomes of the end of the season, we'll, we'll see. But um, it's just been a real revelation to see him back in you know, in his in his in his pomp again. That's 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 mm. what we wanted to see. And the second goal, well, not a love mature to finish on. from a young man, wasn't it? Mature finish from a young man. But what, a, Aaron? That was that was a world class back heel pass by Jed Wallace to find Ty Bury. 
Classic. That was, I mean, you know, that that is, it's a phrase that you can throw around, isn't it, listeners? World class. I've, you know, you 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 would, if you, if Johan Cruyff pulled that off, you'd say, oh, there it is, the greatest player of all time, and that's what Jed Mollis did there to release Tyler Bury, um, who put it away of a plum, and mm. that's. You know, again, uplifting moment. Wonderful, wonderful goal. Um, had me shouting. I think the neighbours must have heard it when that went in uh, from our from our, um, our back bedroom. I watched the game. Two nil, game over. You know, game set and match. And that was that was yeah. wonderful to see. Really, really good football, wasn't it? I mean, it's strange. You don't know what you're expecting when you when when you went in yesterday. You saw the lineup back back five, and uh, um, you know. Burke with with his pace, and then when you lose someone like Oliver Burke, who offers you that pace on the counter, you're just yeah. wondering what you're doing. Cometh that, cometh the owl, cometh the man, young Tyler Bury with with the opportunity, and he's taken it. But again, a bit of class by Jed, and there's there was patience in the build up play, Nick. There was Wasn't patience. that um, Hutchinson? Did he make a run forwards? Yeah, to... he made. Yeah, that... he made a couple during the game. I think people picked him out as a potential man of the match, and I think if it wasn't for Jed's performance, probably he'd be nailed on. He he burst forward a few times. There was one where he just got caught offside, where it looked like he was in. Really, um, the the great thing about that goal is was the lovely, really quick movement that was going on before it. Really, one touch mm. finishing to work that space. And I know the game was a bit stretched. Then QPR trying to push for a winner, although you wouldn't really be able to tell. The the thing with the Jed Wallace back heel as well is you know the ball's slightly behind him. You can see that whole half of the pitch has opened up. His back's to the play, and he manages it to get it to Bury, but managed to add pace to the ball and he, he almost he doesn't even just like just knock it on with his heel he scoops it round changes the angle and adds pace to it which a, a, a lesser player would not be able to do yeah. or would not be as successful in attempting and the ball would go behind Bury or it'd be too slow and a defender could cover and even then and then Bury's got enough time to slow the pace down himself set himself and finish excellently and I think that moment was the best of the game because I think for especially within the within the the fan base there's a big swell of support for Tyler Bury obviously came in Mm. from Wimbledon very young was hyped up to be potential you know very good player for us and has always been kept up the side really because our best player is Jed Wallace and he plays the same position as him and then obviously people want him to get more of a chance the more the the worse we are in attack the more you want to see these young players like Alafe and like Bury coming in his loan to Hartlepool, if anyone hasn't seen the goals he scored for Hartlepool in his first four games that he played for them, if anyone hasn't seen them, go on YouTube, find the highlights. They are unbelievable finishes. I think one's a tap-in and the others are just beating two players and whipping it in a top corner from 20 yards. They are phenomenal finishes. And he was playing in a position as a striker where he, he's, he's never played as a striker before. He, he's quite clearly a very talented player. And I think the fact he came on so early into the game where normally he gets half an hour max the fact he came on so early gave him time to make a couple of mistakes, get into the game, build his confidence. And to finish like that, shirt off, you can see how much it meant to him. Yeah. And uh, and it's so good to see. And, and I think everyone now has got their fingers crossed, hoping that this goal and the injuries, maybe it's the silver lining, does Bury get a run in the side? I found it really interesting that after the game, um, Gary Rowett mentioned that, you know, they, they had the potential to send... Hartlepool were very keen to get him back on loan. I bet they were, Ron. Pretty bet much guaranteed were. 10 more goals. Yeah. But yeah. he he was like, you know, we'll probably want to keep him around the squad, probably good enough to get some chances. And he mentioned that Bury had come to see him a couple of times to say, you need to give him my chance. He's like, he yeah. told him that he felt he's ready. He felt he's able to perform. And that is what you love that for a player, especially a young player who is at the manager's door going you need to put me in the team because I'm better than what I'm seeing. And you asked me before the game, Aaron, do I think Oliver Burke's a good player? And, you know, I kind of 50-50, I hedge my bets. And, you know, like, like, like a lot of people have said, he's great physically, good pace, but probably lacks a bit of intelligence. Bury, I think, will be a better player overall, um, you know, through his career. He's still young, will probably make more mistakes. I think most Millwall fans would rather see Bury playing than a lone player who you know, might, may or may not have an impact. And hopefully this is Bury's chance now to get in the first team and get a run of games together. Absolutely. I was just thinking, as you were speaking about um, Tyler knocking on the door of 
Gary Rowett's office, that's where Jerry Skalak went wrong. He didn't do that, did he? He didn't go knocking exactly. on his door. He was no trouble, you know. Um, that's where it all went wrong for Jerry. Now he's back in um, Bruno or somewhere in, in the Czech, Czechia, wherever it is he came from. Um, I thought that I thought that was a wonderful performance by by Tyler. And I really, I mean, like all Mill fans, nothing we like more to see than one of our youngsters coming through and getting the chance on the on the, on the you know on the big stage. Um, but a brilliantly taken goal because how many you know uh, I'm thinking of John Daddy here. How many <laughs> times have we seen chances like that blown, wasted, put over the bar? Hundred percent. What look at Danny Mac? First minute. Well, Danny yeah, Mac, I mean, I was, in. You know, maybe to draw a, bit, a discreet veil over that Aaron. <laughs> a bit too much in the legs, maybe. And yeah, but also honestly, a player not used that... to being in front of goal. I think you know yeah, that I that mean, was a very much a lack of composure and and yeah, so lack of used... composure. A bit too maybe maybe a bit too buzzing. I think. Off, yeah, off exactly. The start because you know he he just went and you could see he saw the headlines and he sent it straight into the away end. But you know there were chances early on. There were chances early on. Jed forced a really good save out of Marshall, didn't he? Yeah, when he, exactly. when he swiveled and just took that Backed shot away, didn't he? Yeah, really, yeah. really, yeah. really good curling effort. And the keepers found it. But again, you're talking about that Bury chance. How many times will we have seen a Bradshaw or someone, or maybe, yeah, Bud Varson, just send it wide, send it over, send it somewhere else? You know, I, mean, I, was, I, would, I would never say to, I, I love the fire in the belly that we see with Danny Mac. And we, you know, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's Millwall in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, and we want that. Um, I do wonder sometimes why the point than just Danny, Danny, but you know, whether being a fan of a club that you play for, because it, there is a, <laughs> I sometimes wonder whether it leads to a rush of blood to the head sometimes when you want it too much, you know, I mean, I think maybe, um, you know, Ben Thompson fell foul of this a few times, didn't he? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a big moment. I, I must admit, I feared that we might not, <laughs> we might rue that chance being put, put over, but we didn't. We kept them at bay for the whole game, really. Um, closed mm. them out completely and took our chances when they did come back again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I think it's wonderful that we're seeing the rise of the likes of Tyler. There's a great interview, incidentally, Ron. I think you you mentioned it with uh, Jed, where he's he's talking after the game. And I'm, I'm, I've actually recorded it, so I don't know if I'm allowed to do that on recast, but I'm going to do it anyway because that's the rebellious spirit that I am. And I'll play that little section where he says he's a fan of Tyler. I, I love that. I mean, as a senior yeah. player, bloke's going to move on to you know better things um, at the end of the season, one way or the other. But he's still got time to praise and and to 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 say he's a fan of the talent of the boy. You know, I think that's yeah. just wonderful stuff. One of the things yeah. I think I, one of the things that makes me really happy about yesterday's result is the, the the players kind of involved in it. I think there's, as much as people don't like the football necessarily as much at the moment, and, and maybe there's quite a division over whether they like Gary Rowett at all. We've got one of the most likeable squads we've had in a long while, probably since the, the promotion side under, under Harris, and there were probably still a few more elusive figures in. But mm. some of the players, like I, I really like Bury as well. He comes across really well and looks really talented and, you know, Billy Mitchell and Danny McNamara are good young players who also come across really well and you really chuff for. But then the likes, the outsiders as well, like the likes of Mason Bennett, big, big fan of him. And he's playing so well at the moment. So to see him getting goals back to back games after, you know, the struggles he's had, not just off the pitch, but with fitness, just purely. I remember when he joined and I was looking at him in, in six years, like young, Derby's youngest ever player, I think in like six or seven years, he'd started four games because he just missed so much time through injury. So to see him playing really well, and starting to get goals to see Jed coming back in, who is you know a, a Millwall fan favourite and legend, one of our best ever players. To see him coming in and talking about the other players that well and performing so well, really nice. To see all of those little threads come together, the goals are that much more exciting. To see, see, it, see. Oh, Will have scored. Oh, and it's Bennett, brilliant. And then to see Bury do that, excellent. To see everyone involved and everyone playing really well. It adds a bit more, and I don't know if others will agree with me, but I do think, you know, I'm a big fan of the squad and the players we have. And, you know, it's long been said about Millwall's dressing room atmosphere, but it's times like this when we do get good results that you really see it. There's a good vibe, isn't there? Everyone gets on well, which is which is nice, you know. And, and just talking about Jed, I know everyone's sat here and, and you know, it, it's, he's, he's condemned effectively. You know, we've condemned him to, to leave it. The club still believe that they're they're you know, they're, they're holding hope yeah. that he will sign an extension. 
purely for the fact that he loves the place. You know, we know we know about the Nottingham Forest situation, um, and and that happened in January. But you know, they they really feel that they can offer him a competitive deal, and and who knows? You know, we 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 might see something. You just you just don't know with Jed. You know, if Forest go up, do they still go for Jed again in in the summer? We we don't actually know, but the club are are they still believe that they can keep hold of him. I think it's interesting, Aaron. I mean, I don't know if anyone's seen it. I don't know if the listeners have read it or if if, if you've seen it. But it was a really interesting kind of like an open letter from John Berrelson published on mm. the on the, mm. um, the the website. And I've picked out the, uh, the 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 paragraph that caught my eye, listeners where John says there's games to play and win between now and May, and who knows where we will end up. So there's clearly um, a, a, a thinking, um, Gary Rowett, uh, we touched on this previously, I think Gary Rowett still believes there's um, an outside chance if we can string some results together. Um, John thinks that's exciting, and we can then look forward to a big summer. This is the crucial sentence, I thought. A big summer for the club in terms of recruitment and squad building ahead of 22-23. I've I've never known um, that last last chairman I can think of that spoke of a big summer of recruitment was Reg Burr back in eighty seven before eighty seven eighty eight. Um, for, by the standards of the day, that was big recruitment at the time. It certainly spurred a lot of interest, including myself, um, on, on, mm. on the legendary season. Um, and we all know. I mean, you know, Ryan, we've we've spoken about the the number of contracts that are out of you know running out of um, time at the end of the season. So. Um, there's plenty of ideas and plans for something, you know, we, I don't know if we're overdoing it or not, but if the chairman's saying a big summer, well, that's what we're kind of going to be looking forward to now, isn't it, over the um, over the warmer months? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's then delivering when when those words do float. I remember being promised uh, four or five signings in January as well and, you know, and effectively ended up with, what, one and a half now, I, I guess, is how we have to classify Luke Freeman. But, yeah, it, it, it's a big summer. Um, you know whether Jed stays or goes. I would, you know, you'd probably say it's probably eighty twenty now. I know Aaron, the the club are hopeful, and you know there's there's no reason to to completely rule it out. But you do have to, I think, prepare for the worst, listeners, and yeah, and then get pleasantly surprised if it and if it does happen. <laughs> but it's a big summer. I, I thought it was interesting mm. in Gary Mal, Gary Rowett's post match that it's the first time. So you know, someone asked about you know six points off playoffs a bit of form, you know, do you see yourself breaking back in? And he kind of kind of said no. He kind of said, you know, we we want to enjoy the rest of the season and see how, see where mm. it takes us. That's mm. probably the first time since he's been at the club. And, uh, you know, I've not excluding the times where it's become mathematically impossible with three or four games to go and it's looking unlikely. First time, though, this early on in the season where he's pretty much gone, yeah, probably not making the playoffs this year. And I thought that was quite interesting that, Maybe he's maybe the pressures from above has come off of him to an extent in terms of they've said, look, you know, this season's a, a bit of a goner, but don't worry, we, we'll back you in the summer and we'll maybe he's got reassurances that way. Maybe he feels he doesn't have to tow the party line of top six is the ambition and anything short of that or anything short of top 10 is is a failure. I thought that was a, a maybe a telling comment. Maybe it's just something small and I'm reading too much into it, but I don't recall him kind of this early on in the season. Pretty much just saying, look, let's just have a bit of fun and uh, enjoy yourself because God, God knows what that means under Gary Rowett, having a bit of fun and watching some football. Achtung, Mailball. Yeah, the, the, money, the money that John Barrelson puts into this club is is ridiculous. Again, sort of speaking to someone within it, you know, I know we talk about budgets and we talk about recruitment and stuff. Mill aren't Bournemouth; they can't go, you know, toilet roll shopping pre of a pandemic you know <laughs> that's what Bournemouth did that's what Bournemouth did they've gone yeah. out some five players however many have become injured now you know you've got Fulham spending money on someone like Harry Wilson chucking money on that yeah clubs can't do that Millwall certainly can't do that and no, so they're, they're trying to cut their cloth accordingly you know the wage bill is is high again they, they've they've added into that and so it's tough it's tough I know we all call for recruitment and a system and stuff like that but when you're competing against some of the big dogs it is a, a hard hard place to be in you know seeing a player like Luke Freeman and 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 you know get bringing in like a Luke Freeman bringing in all of but yes they're not strikers they're attack-minded players 
But surely, with both of those players, there was a view to, right, let's see what we can do in the summer as well. And mm. unfortunately, we're, we're at a point now where Gary Rout's taken two steps forward with recruitment in terms of Freeman and Burke. But now he's taken five steps backwards because they're both fucked for the rest of the season. Yeah, <laughs> the know? Freeman one's really frustrating as well because Freeman's done. I'm not, Freeman's I'm done. not sure, but I'm not. But that's that's part of the problem is I'm not sure how long was left on his Sheffield United contract. I know they didn't sign him too long, but I don't know how long they signed him for. But you imagine if he was, you know, surplus to requirements, or if he was coming to, you know, the end of his contract, six good months with us, and he could be a a, a free signing or a signing that you pick up and is a player who's been very good at championship level before. But now, if the club did want to commit to that, it's a it's more of a gamble. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very frustrating aspect when the clubs, the planning that they can do in a, in a market that they're struggling in, then just gets, you know, done with, with injuries. It's, it's really frustrating for everyone involved. I saw, um, I should have screenshotted it and I didn't, um, but it was, a, it was a, like a league table of attendances. Uh, someone put it online the other day, and it was amazing how uh, the league table pretty much, with give or take a little bit here and there, fits into the league table of attendances, apart from Bournemouth, who obviously are bottom of the league table of attendances, but then they have, um, they're a special case in, 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 in a way. But we were about 17th, 16th or 17th in the league table of attendances, 12,000 I think was our average. So we're down with the um, the, the Lutons, uh, who you know we've spoken about a few times, who uh, are recruiting well. But it seemed to me that pretty much the bigger the attendance, that's uh, economic, uh, you know, um, common sense, I suppose. But the bit the more people come through your gate, the more money you're going to have to spend on the on the market. And it seems to you know very very roughly reflect that. Um, nothing new in that, of course, um, but it is a problem for us. I mean, I. I actually don't have the. A lot of people were, were mentioning Ollie Burke and and Luke Freeman, um, if they were fit, saying how we, we shouldn't be building our, our our team around lone players. And to some extent, I understand that thinking. Mm. But in both cases, they're both players that will be very very highly uh, valued. They have been highly valued. I mean, I know Burke was at one point rated in in the thirteen million pound or reportedly so stakes when, when he went to Germany. Um, we wouldn't be able to afford these players. Um, and it's a method of, of accessing talent. Maybe that, that there's, you know, you can talk about fitness and, and both are now injured. So maybe there's, um, you know, that's the downside of it. But I think a judicious use of the loan system, which I think is where Gary Rao is trying to to to, to, to pitch it, is no bad thing. I suppose even Benny Cofobe is on loan to us for the season in a way, isn't he? Um, and again, whether we'd have the resources ordinarily to sign a player of his level, I don't know. But... We've got he's to play this. The season, isn't he? He's at the yeah, he's one. Of the yeah, I think contract. so. So I, you know, it's we, we've been afflicted with injuries, listeners, haven't we? And I, I think that's whether that's um, a consequence of signing loan loanees that have that aren't match fit, or whether that's um, you know Calmont Road is like Sweeney Todd's butcher's shop or something. I don't know, but um, we certainly have suffered this season, and we can only hope that we, you know, we we, we pull through that. But uh, do you do you think Ryan that if players were convinced that they were going to become better players at Millwall and they were going to be coached just that little bit better, that they see the dead as a more sort of attractive proposition? Yeah, I think it that, that you know, that all those factors kind of play into it. I think I can't remember if it was someone speaking, they they mentioned that the fact that it's in London, you know, should be should be um attractive to players and it, especially when you're recruiting from abroad, which Millwall seem to uh, well, say struggle with. There's a bit of an understatement. But um you know, I think, I, th- I think the coaching, the the training ground, like Nick said, Calmont Road, is that necessarily as attractive as some other Championship clubs? The fact that the club are looking to build a new training ground yeah. speaks to that, rather than you know the fact like you see like Tottenham building new facilities, Leicester building new facilities. Obviously, we're not on the same scale of those financially by any means, but the reason teams do that, it's not so. Well, it is partly so that your training can get better and everything, and potentially your injury prevention and recovery department can get better. Um, but it's also because when players arrive, that matters to them. So I think giving opportunities to youngsters is important. I think you can you can swing both ways. When when somewhere becomes a place to get an easy pay packet, you know, under Holloway, say, it was obvious to players, tell you what, I'll go on loan there for six months or I'll get a short-term deal there 
and I can get a bit of money. I don't have to try too Put my feet up. <laughs> exactly. But when you see that players are, you know, maybe I'll go to Mill and I can revive my career, even if it's through coaching or for performance, determination, whatever it is, and I can give it a go. I think part of getting players in on loan is almost to, it's a trial period to, to give them a taste of it and say, look, you know, maybe things haven't been going too right for you. Ben is a good example of it, really. You know, he got shipped off to Turkey, you know, partly for what happened with his family just to get him out of the limelight and that, but also because, you know, he's an aiding striker who maybe was slightly underperforming for all of those factors. And Millwall, potentially an opportunity for him to come back in and go, look, you know, we're a decent team, probably lo- slightly lower than the level you may, may anticipate to play at um, in the championship, especially. But, you know, why not give it a year? If you perform really well, your contract's up. You might love it, which he probably does. You know, lives in London, seems to really enjoy it, seems to get on a lot with the players. Why not stay? Why not give us another year after that? So same with Freeman and Burke coming in. Maybe it's an example of, look, we can't quite afford you, but your deals are coming towards the end. Let's get you in for a bit. See how you like it. See how you fit in. We've got a great dressing room. The fans, hopefully, will back you. After that, who knows? Maybe we can keep you in. I think the, the youth development side, Mill are going to struggle to sign youngsters. At the moment, we'll sign youngsters because it's a step up rather than, I think, because of the project Mill were building. Um, you know, they, it's a good opportunity to play the championship for anyone. But there are more exciting championship teams. Have we spoken a lot? about in the past you know, month or two, there are more exciting teams to go to where there's a project and a, and a defined methodology and, and style of play that you go, oh, if I want to develop and play this way, I'll go there. Whereas Millwall, maybe it's a bit of, oh, I get to play in the championship and it's at Millwall, if you know what I mean. Jed made some interesting comments. Um, he, he seemed really buzzed by last night's game. And uh, I think I think he wears his heart on his sleeve, Aaron. Would you would you agree, mm-hmm. Jed? He, he you know he's he's, a, he's an open book, and he was he was talking about the um, the uh, the thrill of playing in front of the den again. Even though I don't know what the crowd was last night, whether it was um, 10, 11, 12,000 or something, I don't know. Um, but it's certainly the atmosphere sounded good on the on the stream that I was watching. And it was I think cracking he... at one point, Ryan, wasn't it? Yeah, really was rocking. Really, really was loud and vibrant. And, you know, even for a low crowd for a Tuesday night. Mm. And it's just the classic thing. Give the fans the football they want. Yeah. And it will be loud. It will be loud. loud you energy know. and some passion. You'll get, you'll get everything back. Yeah. You make, football you make football crowds point. in England are very reactive. You know, it's not, it's not like... I know, you know, the Palace Homesdale Ultras think they can do it, but it's not like going to Italy or Germany where the fans kind of make noise 90 minutes because they're the fans there. In Mill, in Mill, in England, it's very much a give us something to cheer about and we'll cheer. That's why we clap when there's a slide tackle or someone makes a good, uh, someone wins a corner. There's a big uproar. You know, it's those moments that lift the crowd. So the more of those moments, the louder and louder and louder it gets. So you know, the, the the atmosphere in the stadium, especially Millwall, is very reflective of what's happening on the pitch. If there's a long period of passive play where nothing's happening, it will go quiet. If there's a corner and then a tackle and then a near miss, it will build and build and build. And that's what happened yesterday where Millwall had chance after chance after chance and everyone could sense that a goal was coming or a, a chance was coming and that QPR were just not threatening. Even when they tried to counter-attack, there was no intake of breath. No one thought that they were going to get close to scoring. And it was very unusual for for a Millwall fan to be experiencing that, you know, given what we've seen of late. Uncle Nick, you would have loved it yesterday. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was not. I'm housebound, listeners. And, and uh, today's my last day of confinement, actually. I'm allowed out of the front door tomorrow after a bout of COVID. Um, so, yeah, looking forward, to, looking forward to getting back down the den. I won't be. Was it 26? I think it's... Um, I can't remember who we're playing the, on the 26th. That's the next time I'm going. Where, where are you going to go tomorrow? Tomorrow? I, I think I've got to go to Tesco's tomorrow to, to get some. <laughs> this, this, this is very mundane, I'm afraid. This is, but what, one thing that did uh, make me laugh um, was Michael Gove, the government minister for whatever he's minister for, was in the QPR end. I don't know if you saw that picture or not. And I thought it might have been like a fake um, Photoshop, but I think it was the real thing. He, uh, is he a QPR fan, Michael Gove? I don't know. He's, I, he was I thought the, that. I wasn't a hundred percent sure that it was him, but I'm, I've got no idea. I kind of want it. I, I want it to be true. I don't know why I want it to be true, but he was in. Uh, there was a bloke that looked very much like Michael Gove in the in the away end. Listeners, I think just as well. the, the the former the former education minister getting a footballing lesson. Well, it was it was also a pictured in a was it like an Aberdeen rave where he's got an suit shirt and tie and he's in a rave at one. I, I, 
don't know what goes on in the government. But anyway, so then it, it, it was either Michael Gove or it was his lookalike. I don't know. Um, you know, take your pick. Whatever you want to be true can be true. Sam Goldwyn stuff. Um, I just wanted to mention, if we can, boys, recast. Um, so to, before we came on today, I, I um, lifted a couple of snippets of, um, of Jed and, and Gary Rowett um, in their post-match interviews. And I've, I've become quite um, interested, I don't know, I suppose interested in recast because it's it's the new video platform for the club. So I think they see it as a, as a big thing for next season more than, more than this season. It's, it's kind of replacing the... Um, I don't know if it replaced the club YouTube channel where you don't really close down these things in the modern world, do you? But you kind of have multi streams going out. But the, the 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 recast, the idea of recast is that you have to watch a series of adverts and you build up like a credit, um, an online credit, which will then lets you um, listen to whichever you know uh, interview you want to want to hear. And I, I, I've been struggling um, with it as to whether I like it or not, and I. I I can't think of any reason to dislike it that's logical because if you go on YouTube, you watch an advert, you watch ITV, you watch an advert. Mm. Um, you do anything in this modern world, you watch an advert. You can be reading a newspaper article online, you're watching an advert. Um, but somehow, I, I, I don't know what it is. It's it, it's it's irrational, Ryan. And I, 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 I can't make myself like it, and yet I can't think of any good reason why it's any different to YouTube. I don't know how you found it. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yesterday's match was very much the recast derby. I think uh, QPR used it as QPR well. QPR so on there. Yeah, very yeah. much the battle of the recastees. Um, it, yeah, I'm I'm really intrigued by it as well. I think similarly for for reasons as you said, I'm I, I'm I'm hoping in the next week or two to to speak to someone at recast and hopefully speak to someone at the club as well, and hopefully a few fans about you know where it's been going because similarly I've noticed that the reactions to, to it online are. Pretty much, yeah. You negative. see a lot of negatives, don't you? I'm yeah, I, I, I've had a couple of messages from fans saying, you know, it's, <clears throat> you know, they're fine with it. They 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 don't think it's as bad as people make it out. And I think it is that that upfront nature of it, like you mentioned, everything now is you you watch adverts to watch content or read content yeah. or whatever it yeah. is. You're but listening to an advert to listen so to this, up, you know? Yeah, yeah well, the the fact that they are so upfront with it, the fact that they yeah. say it, it it does rub people up the wrong way, and it's the fact of downloading another app or signing up for another thing i think does get does maybe roll people up and especially when they're used to getting something for free yeah i think it's the the, the reason the club are doing it obviously is revenue and that is yeah. the club need to find ways to bring in revenue you know people can't moan about having quiet transfer windows when the club has no money so the club are fully justified in way in doing everything they can i think um i was looking on the recast website and they say about uh, maintaining ownership you know that you might have someone knocking down your door nick for lifting clips from it but i think it's a bit more secure having <laughs> things on recast i imagine i don't know for sure but down the line full games might be available on recast you know, I, I think they so. did an under i think they did an under 23 yeah, game, but yeah, yeah yeah but rather than maybe on your tuesday games now rather than going to uh rather than going to i follow and getting a match pass you can buy some credits or watch some adverts on recast and and watch it there so it's a it's a new format, and I think some clubs are taking it on. The company itself has got a lot of investment and backing. Um, mm. their, their tagline, I think, is "Pay for things with your attention." Effectively, or you know, paraphrasing, pay for content you want with your attention, which is the modus operandi for every social media company in the world. They are all comp battling for your attention. The fact that Recast say it as their tagline, I think, is interesting, and I think maybe that's what puts people off but you know I, I i have not used it personally um so i can't comment too much on how it's how it's used and and the experience of it but i'm i'm intrigued to see where the club take it i'm glad that they found somewhere to generate revenue and i remember on your last on your last show with with neil and harry you were talking about the club doing the basics better and mm, you know yeah, getting more yeah, money yeah, for things like yeah, this yeah taking control putting out better content taking control of it and finding a way they can make more money from it is arguably doing something better that will benefit the club hopefully benefit the fans and hopefully benefit the football on the pitch. So, you know, the jury's out. Hopefully it one, maybe it's one of these things that people just get used to. Um, we'll see where it goes, I think for, for the, for the time being. Recast is different and I, I, I will see how it goes. I, I, I wasn't as, um, I can't give you any logical reason listeners for it to be uncomfortable. I think it's just change. I think that's probably the, 
<laughs> makes makes a gentleman of a certain age uncomfortable, boys, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and just before we close, the only other thing I wanted to mention is I, in my junk email today, listeners, I, I, I subscribed to a thing called Fan Hub a little while ago, which I deleted because I found it totally, totally tedious and totally boring. You have a lot of free time on your hands, don't you, Nick? Oh, uh, mate. <laughs> That's what retirement does to you, Aaron. Uh, anyways, and I worry about these things. Um, <laughs> anyway, it, the, the, the Fan Hub, it, it, it's like a... Um, it, it, by attending games, you, you put yourself up a league table. It's totally outside my range of interest and you could call yourself a super fan if you attended x number of games and you were top of the league table of attendances and, and stuff like that and it seemed harmless enough and i thought well okay it's fine if you're you know a teenager and that's that's that, that kind of thing matters more to you at that age but today in my junk email there was they were, they were touting around for to spend 50 pound on investing in their business and i thought ah there it is there, there's the moment that's what that's what they were all about oh, really. I, was, coffee. Oh, I said coffee no this was to invest in their business I, and I, it was it was like a very um i mean you see a lot in the game now these socios these fan tokens there's a whole market of um so-called financial investments which are highly um highly uh, volatile i'm trying to find probably find the, the right words so i don't slag anyone off and yeah. unregulated as well unregulated that's a good way to put it uh unregulated high risk um your financial capital may be at risk is there? yeah <laughs> <that's> <laughs> right underneath. and um i saw uefa have teamed up with socios who are like, the leading name in this this kind of world of buying they're not you're not buying shares in clubs but you're buying tokens that in some way give you the illusion of having some kind of input on the decision making of um you know manchester united juventus or barcelona like they're going to take any notice of you um with, with your fan tokens but that's that's what they're selling and there seems to be a huge market in it and the, i think fan hub were trying to go down this route because it, it it was sold sold it was advertised initially as a kind of like a fun thing um where you could influence your club in some way um very tenuous tenuous connection but now i thought well, so the moment anyone starts to look for money from you boys is the time to um just to be a bit wary of them. So um, anyway, that's what I had to do. I thought I'd mention well, it, and I'll say, say no more than that. It's it's like them ones that uh that advertise bollock shavers, you know, like no. <laughs> on everything. If you spend if you spend if you if you listen to anything, not even sport related, anything that the the target demographic is male. I reckon, you know, if you listen to one or two podcasts a week, you're probably getting four or five of those adverts, aren't you? Aaron? You've literally got like a Burton Albion fan. They are um, what. Yeah, when I when I come home, when I come home, I love. <laughs> they wanted it's to. Over um, over. They contacted us, didn't they? That's what's the name yeah. of that firm? Ball shape, not ball shape. Manscaping. That's it. ball shavers. They should just <laughs> be called ball shavers. Ball shavers. <laughs> um, Manscape. They contacted us, listeners, and um, tried to entice us into a sponsorship deal where um, the best deal to be had was where. I guess here, Aaron, Ryan, and I would talk about ball shaving for a few minutes in some banterish style before we got into the into the show itself. And I found the whole thing quite demeaning. And the, the, well, the, they weren't you, even offering any money. I think you just got like you, a, you told them where to put it. You told them all told about them your, your extensive <laughs> regime that you already have underway. You have no need for these products. You said. I've been at this game for, for 50 years from now. I, I need no assistance with this. Our, our listeners don't need to hear about my pubic hair clipping activities. <laughs> that was my that was that was my view on it. And it remains so, listeners. It remains so. And, and that's we'll, act, of, that's so. act of nights, isn't it? That That's act, a separate podcast. The, top, the topics we've nights, covered on this podcast have been ropey, mate. There we are. So In the history of act of, like, I just I feel partly responsible for taking it down this route of filth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, should, should, should you look ahead to Blackburn? Blackburn away, big game. Um, mm. can, we, can we can we make it three on the spin? I, uh, there's no reason why not. I think you, you've got yeah. to travel north. There. I mean, they're a form side at the moment, aren't they? They're doing well, um, and they will fancy themselves. It's going to be a win. They're missing BBD. Day. Supposedly not. I think is the you latest reckon? news. But uh, well, that's what that's what. Uh, Apparently that the, they've they've said themselves they might be wishful thinking but they they they're confident he'll be back but that's not a guarantee. I fancy it. I fancy it. I, I think that you know um, this new relaxed pressures off his shoulders. Gary Row is is kind of like he's at Woodstock now. He's 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 got the guitar out. Uh, it's it's all gone very relaxed. They're going to play the uh, Tyler Bury up front in this new mobile highly paced three man attack. I see goals, listeners. I can see us getting a few up there. This, um, this team has. 
the, the potential to be a really good counter attacking team at pace. Yeah, yeah. Devastating that, yeah, pace. that pace on the break is it's it's just be a case of everyone staying fit and them ensuring that hamstrings are just firmly attached pre game. Yeah, I think uh, Mason Bennett's going to be on ice. I think he, he, I think he's going to be in a in a cryo tank being shipped up to Blackburn a day in advance, and just just no one can touch him. I think it's going to be light training. But I think Blackburn, what without winning four games now, I think a couple of losses in there. They they played, you know, some of the better teams, but they drew last time mm. out with West West Brom. Okay, that's a Valerian Ishmaelless West Brom, but they were they were they went up too much when we played them a couple of weeks ago. It's not. Not going to be an easy game, but is it a game for Murray Wallace to be on the left, Malone to sit on the bench, and the return of Harry's favourite player, the three-man defence of Alex Pierce? Surely you go again. You go yeah, again. I, I would. Yeah, you don't. You don't change it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, what yeah. will happen? Fiddle around that? with it. Fiddle around with it. No, <laughs> no. He's back to he's, you're. You're back talking about your ball shaver again, aren't you? Yeah, I thought that. But I thought that was one of the, the lines that never made it to it. Um, oh dear, I should never have mentioned that, listeners. <laughs> but no, yeah. I think, I think, I think, yeah, I think it will be same lineup. I mean, the only question will be about tired legs. I think you know it's been pretty, been pretty much same lineup for the last few games, and we played will be four in two weeks, so fitness might be an issue. But really, after the back of that. I don't see who you take out. I don't see who you drop or why you make a change. I think if you go again, that team's more than capable of, of playing that that more defensive counter-attacking style. And like you say, with the pace on the break of, of Bennett, Bury and Wallace, potentially could be goals, could be exciting. You know, I yeah. don't think... It, it's been one game, Nick. Let's not get carried away too I'm so easily, too quickly, I'm so easily but, swayed by the sweet again, words of a chairman. And we, one, we've, scored, and... we've scored two goals in back-to-back games. That must be the first time in a little while. Now against Cardiff and now against QPR, so maybe we're hitting a rich vein of form that will that will see us propel rapidly up the table. Aren't, aren't you buzzing to hear Tony Mowbray just grunt after the game as well, <laughs> just like talk through his teeth again? You know, it'll be funny. It'll be funny. But yeah, um, pressure's off. Go out now. It seems you know that whole spell of well, couple of defeats. You know, you never know what's now. Um, go and play your football, Gary. Go and play your football. That's it, guys. Go and enjoy yourself. But he, he seemed like a very content person. Yes, they're content man yeah. yesterday. And uh, it was nice, nice, nice to see. There you go, Nick. There's your pod, your cod pass. Thank you, Chips. Um, thank you, Uncle Nick. Thank you, Ryan, for your time. Uh, anyone making the trip up Saturday? No, mate. No, it's not going to be a day for travelling. It's going to be quite, is it Storm? Can't remember the name of this one. It's going to be a big, uh, windy, wild day. So Storm Tyler. Especially up north. Storm Tyler. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Storm nice. Jed, Storm Tyler, something like that. Storm Harrelson, uh, mate. We're going to play our show out today. We've got, I've had loads, and I really appreciate loads of messages from mm. um, the, the voicemail sent to me via, um, via WhatsApp. So we're going to close out the show today with... All of them, actually. They're going to run them one after the other. So, um, big thank you to Ryan. Big thank you to Aaron. And, there you uh, go. Thank you very uh, much, Nick. Thank you to you for listening. Uh, it follow the voicemails. But from us, it's bye for now. Now, that is the sound of Yaz. The only way is up, ladies and gentlemen. And after that performance tonight which I did not see because I was working. I can only say the only way is up for Millwall. Two wins in a week, shoving my criticism of Gary Rowett straight back down my face, which is exactly what I wanted. Contrary to some people's opinion, I want Millwall to do well. I want them to win. I want them to make the playoffs. But I want them to entertain me doing it. And two wins in a week, four goals. And if they go to Blackburn at the weekend and nick a point it's a fantastic week for the Lions I've seen the goals where has this been all season but I don't care we've won two games in a week and the dream of the playoffs is just about on I've cut this well too early but here we go Gary, is that the best performance you've seen since you've been at the club I think it's pretty damn close. Um, I thought it had a little bit of everything in there. They're a really good side, QPR, they moved the ball really well. Um, I thought our game plan was spot on. I thought the way the players executed it was absolutely 
brilliant tonight because ultimately uh, there seems to be a cost to every game that we play at the moment and um, Berkey's done his hamstring now so it's incredible but I don't think I've had a, if I'm being really honest I don't think I've had a season uh, where it's been so difficult to prepare a team and so difficult to predict which way to try to build the team because every time you start someone else gets injured um, you know and that sometimes you have to just accept that um, but you know those challenges come your way Back to front, everyone's superb. What did you feel the players did so well tonight to, to pull off a result like that? Yeah, we, we started the game well, and I think the crowd... Well, listen, listen I've, I've played 250-odd games for this club. Like, when the crowd are on side of the den, it's a tough place for the opposition. Um, and it's, it's not felt electric enough for me this season because our performances haven't been good enough and we haven't got them on side here enough. Um, when you think of the vast contrast of the atmosphere of the Preston game a week ago, dull performance from us, and it felt dull in here. Um, it's up to the players to get the fans on board. And we started the game well. They could see we were pressing them. London derby had that bit of edge. And when the crowd are like that, it's, it's an easy place to play for a Millwall player. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a good night tonight. I really enjoyed it. Evening, Nick. Evening, listeners. Ben Anthony here. Um, wow, what a result. What a game. Um, we finally saw a Millwall side, that sort of side that we desperately wanted to see f from us for a while finally turned up we were positive attacking we were th a threat to them the whole game we didn't stop um, we were difficult to break down we were stronger than them at points they were uh, scared of us they didn't know how to handle us what a difference um, something that we've desperately needed to see this whole season. It's not all perfect. There's still some things that need fixing. I think we are very static when we've got possession. We Most of the players seem to be stood still waiting for the ball to come to them. There's not much movement. And I think that leads to us losing momentum and then ultimately passing backwards and sideways, which is a bit frustrating to watch. And that's been part of our problem this season. And obviously we have a quite significant injury crisis, but going off today, Freeman seemingly out for the season. Um, we've already had a 15-year-old on the bench today, so who knows what's going to happen next game. But you've got to think that Tyler Bury is going to get a start next game because he was fantastic today, I thought. Positive and kept running. They were, they were scared with him. They didn't know how to handle him. And was just exciting to watch. Really pleased he got his goal. And Bennett as well, getting a, another goal. He played really well. And um, they they teamed up really well with Jed. And it, it was a, a, an excellent display from, from those three in attack. Yeah, I think, uh, I think there were real positives. I think, for me, Keith was the, the man of the match. Keith and Beld. Um, he was immense in that holding midfield role the whole game. And um, it was probably, for me, one of his best performances in a Millwall shirt, if not his best. Um, and we've given a lot of criticism to, to Rowett, but you've got to give some credit where it's due. And that performance is the sort of performance we've wanted to see all season. So hopefully we can do that again. Um, the issue this season has been consistency. So we we have to hope that he can can sort of reignite that for for us this season. Um, I'm concerned that our squad is too thin still for us to mount any kind of late challenge. So I, I, I'm still of the opinion that I think any kind of playoff push is a step too far for us. But an opportunity now to play some kids and play some attacking football and just go for it. Why not? We're safe. Why not just try and win games and outplay team but who knows we wait and see um and maybe maybe the only way is up come on you lions mike aiden here live from london bridge station following that qpr result 2-0 win uh the relapse i've been away on holiday so i've missed the last three home games but i'm back maybe i gave them a bit of good luck tonight um, yeah, brilliant result and a, a brilliant performance and win. Um, thought we dominated from start to finish, fully deserved it. 
could have scored in the opening 30 seconds. McNamara not particularly composed in front of goal, is he? Uh, spooned it over the bar. And then a, another uh, one that sort of came over, a nice snapshot from Jed, which was well saved um, sort of by the goalkeeper. Game change. It wasn't really um, a Rowett genius stroke, was it? Another signing in January, Burke limps off and took... Uh, what was quite amusing was he's the fastest player by a mile on the pitch and he limped around. It took him about 15 minutes probably to limp round from one side of the pitch to the other to go off injured. Um, and uh, Rowett was forced to bring on Tyler Bury in the first half. And what a performance from the young lad. He's just something that we haven't got so direct with his running, so skillful. What a goal he scored. That second goal was fantastic. Came out the traps in the first class quite well. A bit of genius from Jed over. Another Scott Malone. He's done it a couple of times that sort of left footed low volley into the box and Bennett finished fantastically and again Jed was in the right area a nice bit of skill to find Bury who thought he might have pushed it too far but then he sort of finessed it into the right hand side of the goal with two brilliant goals from Mill, which is not what you hear the whole time Rowett didn't go too defensive too early either. I think he got it about right there, about 85. He took off Malone, brought on Alex Pierce, and not even Pierce, he could mess that one up tonight. QPR were poor, expected more from them, to be honest. Not sure what's going on with them tonight. We fully deserve to win. And it's just the sort of performance which you beg for more of, I think. We've not seen that enough this season, a sort of dominating performance from start to finish. You know, if we can see a few more performances like that at the Den, you know, at least we can try and push up the table and get into the top half. A um, couple of tough away games coming out. Blackburn obviously doing very well this season and Derby, you know, fighting for their lives down there. So let's see what we get from there. But it was a really good performance tonight from the Lions. And, you know, that's what we get at Millwall at the moment. We get a few drab ones, bad results, a few good results and a, and a really good performance like that tonight. It's a bit of everything. Um, but tonight at least was a good one. So good to be back at the Den. And come on, you Lions. Hi, Nick. It's Matt Richards. Well, well, great performance, great win. As, I mean, probably one of it's got to be one of our best ninety minutes for the whole season, isn't it? Really, I mean, from from the first half, I was a bit worried because we just, I don't know, I mean, Danny missed that early chance, but we, you know, we were definitely on top. You know, from a team which is what fourth, you know, I mean, we we were on top all, all match, and yeah, so first half was good performance, but second half, you know, two fantastic goals and. You know, it shows the difference Jed makes to the team. You know, great assists for both goals. And um, well finished, you know, really, really, really good goals by Mason and, and Ty Bury. Lovely seeing him score the goal. First of all, I thought, oh, as he, as he turned inside, I thought, oh, he's going to miss his chance. But he just buried it. So, yeah, really good performance. Strong strong performances all over. I thought Keith and Bell was, was, was brilliant in midfield. Didn't put a foot wrong. Great tempo to the game. Um, Mason was, you know, you see the difference between that game and um, and the game on Saturday. You know, there's, when Bennett plays, he just plays with a lot more energy and passion, doesn't he? Um, and he gets the crowd going. And superb. And I thought Jed, Jed was Jed was getting back to his best, wasn't he? He's, he's finished his early zip, and he and he made a difference with the two goals. So great performance. It shows us what we can do. You know, we shouldn't fear Blackburn. We, we should go up there, and we should go for a win up there. Anyway. Um, yeah, great to come away from uh, three, another three points, two wins and a shot. Come on, you Lions. Hi there, it's Angelo. Uh, just got back from the game. Uh, top, top, top performance today. Enjoyed it. Enjoyed it thoroughly. The whole team was just brilliant. If we go through it, Bart, his handling of a few little shots, no spinning, very, very comfortable. Uh, Danny Mack, two stroke three, crunching tackles that literally got the crowd on the feet, which is brilliant. Um, Hutch, fantastic couple of darting runs from Hutch and I believe that one of his marauding runs uh, creates the, the second goal uh, so brilliant from Hutch Cooper handled Lyndon Dykes had him in his pocket brilliant from Cooper Murray Wallace just an absolute oiled machine yeah just like just perfect yeah the guy is just unreal Malone I've been giving Malone a lot of stick lately but he played well today his first time cross for Bennett's goal is absolutely different class, yeah? So, well done to Malone. Oliver Burke, obviously, it, I think he might have even been carrying an injury because he didn't look like... He, he looked very quiet, so... Uh, and obviously, he's got an injury. looks like he's going to be out for a while. Billy, brilliant. Must have touched the ball 2,000 times, yeah? Just great. Just need to go a little bit more forward direct. Keith Dumbeld, 
He was getting involved. He was breaking things up. Great performance from him. Again, he's becoming very consistent. Jed, brilliant. Jed created both the goals. Didn't stop running. Absolutely first class from a guy that suppose he wants to leave us. He still put in 100% effort. Brilliant. Um, Bennett, one of the best performances from Bennett. Looks like he's top, top fitness levels at the moment. Great finish first time. Brilliant, Bennett, yeah? And Tyler Bury. Tyler Bury, just brilliant, yeah? The, you know, the, the guy, sometimes he stands there not knowing what to do, but when he's got the ball at his feet and he just runs, they can't cope with him. He creates he creates havoc, yeah? Um, and his finish is just superb. And them celebrations at the end were absolutely fantastic. When he come on, he's just... He just causes havoc, yeah? The kid causes havoc. His pace, his direct running. Again, there was little situations where he's standing there not sure what to do. But once he's got the ball, when he just runs direct, he's just, he's just a nightmare for defenders. And his finish was top, top class. And the celebrations were out of this world. A long time since we've seen wild celebrations like that. Really whipping off his shirt and all the players jumping on top of him. Looks like he's a very popular popular guy in the changing rooms. And fantastic. Absolutely fantastic for Tyler Bjorn. So pleased for him. And just a great, great night. Really, really enjoyed it. Come on, you lions. Thank you for listening to Aston Moore. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a cheap little review. A reverdiction with all. Till next time. Who do you want to watch? <laughs>